Good evening officially to everyone who is tonight with us. A uh, warm welcome for our presenter, Mr. Mehmet Serkaninsi from Turkey and his advisor, lecturer, Klaus Feldman from Germany. I will uh, uh, pass the host rights to Mehmet and wish you the best in, in your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say to uh, thank to, uh, thank to uh, Mr. Dragan uh, about uh, this work. Um, but uh, I would like to say also uh, for everybody, my English not uh, enough. Uh, when I <laughs> told the Dragan, Dragan said that I don't want to hurt uh, excuse. Then I was motivated. Thanks a lot for this. And also I would like to thanks uh, once uh, Mr. Feldman for uh, agreeing to be my mentor and uh, giving me, uh, me ideas. Uh, I try to uh, share to our topics now. Uh, yes. Start. Now, uh, our topics, name of uh, five question about last five minutes on the game. Uh, I need to be here, I think, sorry. On the left, you can go and present yeah, I saw full I screen, saw. you on the left. You, yeah. Yeah, now, uh, this small size also, yeah. Our topics, uh, five questions about last five uh, minutes on the game. Uh, this analysis of the top three teams in Tokyo Olympics. Uh, we wonder uh, first three teams. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, we want to ask five question uh, in uh, they when they played in, uh, close score the game. And uh, we want to ask uh, last five uh, minutes, about last five minutes, five questions. Uh, you, you saw this. Uh, we wonder how did they could the team change the result in the last five minutes? And did the team change the strategy in defense and uh, change the strategy in attack? And for last five minutes, who were the important players during the uh, game? Uh, how did coaches used to uh, tactic time out in uh, this period? Uh, we will start uh, in France. Uh, I would like to uh, show about France in small uh, info. And uh, they start group A. They played matches in group A. And uh, which matches of the France will we review? Uh, we will start in Norway, France, uh, France, Germany, two group matches and last uh, final match. And uh, in Norway, France, uh, final score, you see 32-29 and some statistics on the right side. This is uh, about last five minutes, uh, some uh, statistic and how many times they uh, made the attack and shoot goal for turnovers uh, about this. We will uh, we want to speak uh, when uh, videos uh, we watch. Then uh, I will speak the about game. But first, I need to share the videos. in Norway, France. Start. Where
after the timeout, they find the long score from the Serhan, sorry to interrupt you, but I think that we have to go without video material because we cannot see nothing. Okay. Probably uh, you see on your computer, but we cannot see nothing. And that's why we, we try to see what's happened, but it's impossible. Okay, coach. Uh, try to go just with now? the presentation. Only I'm uh, reading in my presentation. Uh, what we can do, we can send after <clears throat> to the people all these video materials and they can okay. see it because this is impossible. I, okay. I don't know about the rest of you. Can you see it or? Okay, uh, I will start only uh, my presentation. Huh? We didn't uh, watch the videos. We cannot see it. That's the yeah. problem. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I will share to statistic. Maybe. Okay, uh, we looked, uh, we didn't look in Norway, France group games. And uh, if we spoke about last five minutes, uh, we asked first question, how did they pull that team change the result in the last five minutes? Uh, I spoke about this. Uh, Okay, uh, for now France Germany group match. And last five minutes scores uh, you see in the, in the uh, both teams, France and Germany in last five uh, minutes, 28-27 uh, France uh, and final score same, 30 and 29 uh, France. In the last five minutes, we spoke uh, about question. Uh, in France, uh, was leading 28-27 in five minutes and uh, maintained its superiority at the end of the match. They won the match. And Germany preferred uh, in the last five minutes, 6-0 offensive defense. Uh, is it right terminology? I don't know. Offensive defense, they try to make high. And, uh, but sometimes Germany want to, want to defend uh, Karabatic uh, about nine meters in the defense. Uh, they were able to interrupt the game uh, with two fouls on the defense. France also preferred 6-0 offensive defense and sometimes they uh, were seen to play a close Three, two, one. Uh, about strategy uh, in attack, we spoke 28, uh, 45 seconds. Uh, the German team uh, was behind 30, two goals, 30, 28, and they preferred uh, the uh, seven against six in the game. Uh, having lost a turnover at 28-20 second, Germany goal in the last 10 seconds did not affect the results and they were defeated. How is my voice? Can you hear me? Or? We hear you, we hear you. Everything is okay. okay. We hear you and we see the presentation. Okay. Uh, we spoke about the question four. Uh, who were the important players during the last five minutes? Uh, I can say that I had perceived in the question differently for this match. If we talk about the breaking moments of the game, we can say that the uh, critical two turnovers made by the player number uh, 95 in Germany. Uh, he playing in center back. They also received a passive game punished from the referees in the last five minutes. This is uh, maybe not good who is important players, but uh, I think this. Uh, also, both teams did not use a, a timeout in the last five minutes.
All France and Denmark final game. Uh, France also won. Some statistic. And about last five minutes, you can see in final score. 23-21 France, last five minutes. And uh, final score. And they uh, had an attack, uh, five attack. And in five attack, they uh, had a shoot, three shoot, and they found uh, two goals. They made in last five minutes, uh, two four, and also Denmark had the five attack and uh, they have three shoot. You see my uh, score table, is that table about last five minutes. But I would like to say, uh, now this about uh, Denmark and the Danish team uh, had a change chance to meet uh, France six again five between the uh, fifty five and uh, fifty six minutes between France score one goal during the, in this game uh, at uh, fifty six thirty two. Uh, Denmark took to two, two minutes, and France, uh, which has a score advantage, uh, also captured the numerical superiority. Denmark also uh, they playing seven against six players at the last thirty seconds. The Danish team lost turnover, uh, turnover, and they saw one more goals in the goal. And score like this. Coach, if you want uh, for uh, about all games, generally statistics can small, but because uh, my concentration now a little bit now because we didn't <laughs> solve the game. If you want, uh, we will, uh, we want to share you for last like this, I can if for you okay no problem i will uh, share after we finish i will share your presentation okay thank you very much uh, okay uh, uh, we want to uh, now share about for uh, nine games and for uh, three teams all Generally, okay. and okay. small, ans uh, short answers to five questions about all teams in general. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, our presentation uh, have a five question, and uh, we uh, can speak generally about France, Denmark, and Spain. Uh, for one uh, question, one uh, France. They didn't lose any game in the which they were leading to in the last five minutes, but they did not come to from behind and win a game either. Also, Denmark uh, have some statistic. They didn't lose any game in which they were leading in the last five minutes, but they did not come to from behind and win a game either. If we spoke about the question one about the Spain, uh, likewise Spain like the French and Danish teams, did not lose the matches in which they were ahead in the last five minutes. Did the team change the strategy in defense? If you want to speak about France, they played the same strategy, 6-0 six six offensive defense. In some moments, they were seen to play in closed 3-1 defense. In the same way, uh, for Denmark, they prefer six again, uh, six zero uh, offensive defense. There hasn't been a strategy they have changed for defense in the last few minutes. For Spain, uh, unlike other two teams, Spain has uh, adopted different strategies in defense. Um, maybe yes, in addition to preferring the defense like France, there were periods in the last minute when they preferred to defend man-to-man -man in their own half-wide. 
they were behind the score. Spain team that made the game with the most defensive fall in the last five minutes. Did the team change the strategy in attack? Uh, France team in the attack, uh, they generally continued the strategy with which they started the match. They always used to substitution uh, with the goalkeeper as soon as they played with the missing player in the match in order not to lose an advantage against the opponent in offense. Denmark team generally did not hesitate to play seven against six in the last five minutes. In the three games that ended with a close score, they generally tried to seven against six game and they were mostly successful. Spain, uh, there were times when they preferred to play six again, seven against six, like Denmark in general, in order to be on one more than the opponent in offense. The wing players tried to find position as they sprinted in. Who were the important players during the last five minutes? Uh, if we spoke about France team players, I can say it. Of course, Nikola Karabetic stay in the game in the last minutes, and the opponents want to make to an extra high defense for him, which relieved uh, his team. He contributed the score and he earned the seven meter. Uh, he was an effective player of the last five minutes, uh, my opinion. And Denmark players, I can say, of course, uh, Michael Hansen and other uh, and other players uh, who accompanied uh, him in the last five minutes with his effective play, uh, goalkeeper Landin Jakobsen, with his critical saves. Uh, for Spain, the number 10, Alex Dushabev, who made a significant contribution to the team, is an important player who had more responsibility the last five minutes. Last question. How did the coaches use the in that period? France uh, team did not use the Tactic timeout last five minutes. In Denmark against Spain, uh, we spoke uh, uh, against Spain when they played. Uh, Denmark, which has played with seven players so far, gave up this tactic against Spain, which had a high defense and preferred to play with six players, uh, playing one attack in this way. Denmark took a tactical timeout. The Danish coach who put up probably uh, want to find a solution to the defense, found one more goal after the timeout. We spoke uh, about against France, Denmark, which took a tactical timeout at 58 uh, and six scored one goal after the timeout, bringing score to 24-23. France team gave to a change to Denmark by making a turnover on offense after conceding a goal. They playing also seven against six players last 30 minutes. The Danish team lost turnover and they saw one more goal in the goal. We spoke about Spain. Tactic timeout uh, against uh, when they play against Denmark. Spain took a timeout at 27 uh, 54 during the uh, third attack. After the timeout, uh, after the timeout, a penalty against name of players. Inclusive uh, shoot on the fourth of uh, four attack. He, he went on the defense, um, they went on the defense, uh, man to man. Uh, in Spain, own card. This made a, yeah. and against Germany, 
the Spanish team played with a missing player until until last 30, 36 26 in defense on offense they played six again six to six without goalkeeper they managed to score after last two minutes tactic timeout again it's Norway last 20 second they had tactic timeout and they scored after the timeout they went to consolation using the pivot cross and won the seven meters and last of all against Sweden when they uh, Swedish team received the goal difference to one Spain took time out at this time last five minutes and after the timeout they also find the goal at last 40 second the match I would like to say uh, Spanish team uh, last uh, Norway and uh, Sweden games last tactic timeout they made the same system uh, they strategy same uh, I would like to sh show you videos I cut to this uh, timeout tactic timeout uh, videos but now <laughs> impossible I would like to say now this thanks for your time and listening <laughs> uh thanks to you thanks to you I, I i put some things on the paper and uh i will like to to make a um, few question or few conclusion maybe but uh, together with with all of you please uh, turn on your cameras and um, i will like to ask first you klaus to add some things because probably we cannot see the video and then all this will be much more clear for every one of us but uh, i'm sure that you have something to to add and to explain because you analyze all these things uh, yes i did sorry and uh, there are some aspects which are quite uh interesting in uh, these games uh, the basic idea was to have a look at the last five minutes in a close game uh, so uh, we choose those games with two goals difference five minutes to the end okay we could say one or three goals and we could say seven or or five minutes uh, but we made this decision for the five minutes and the two goals and uh, it was uh, very interesting that no game was turned. Uh, so always the team who was in a lead five minutes to the end was leading at the end. Uh, in general, this is not very surprising because in this Olympic tournament, there was no game turned. Uh, mm -hmm. So always the team who was leading in halftime was winning at the end. Uh, uh, there are only some games, let's say one or two, with a draw at halftime. Uh, but normally we can say that the team who was leading at halftime was leading five minutes before the end and was leading at the end. Uh, and uh, I, I don't want to say something bad against the coaches, but I think that changing the strategy during halftime or changing the strategy for the last five minutes do something in attack, do something or change something in defense was not happening. Uh, the teams continued. And as you can see from this uh, very clever question, did they use the team time out? Uh, you could see even they were behind. They didn't use the team time out. Uh, so this is something which is a little bit surprising from my side. Uh, so change of defense didn't happen uh, on one side. Change of attack system was the only idea to play seven against six. OK, this under pressure might be a good idea. Uh, but Denmark, uh, even though we're not under pressure, they use this system always. Uh, so this is the, the thing that happened there. Uh, there was one special game from these nine games I saw. Uh, it was Germany against Spain. 
in this game, uh, Spain was leading five minutes to the end. Germany turned the game, was one game a goal in front, and Spain came back and at the end they were winning by one goal. Huh? But this was the only game in, in, in that way, which was a little bit crazy like that. Um, the question about the important players uh, at the end uh, is something uh, I like to discuss very much because um, uh, as our uh, colleague from Turkey said, for instance, in Denmark, it was Mikkel Hansen. Uh, so that's true because he was scoring, for instance, from penalty. But from my point of view, uh, making a goal from seven meters is something which is important at that moment. But we have to keep in mind that on the other side, one player must be in a position that he is uh, fouled from the defense so that the seven meter is given. And on the other side, we uh, have to consider that some player must bring the ball to this one who will be killed from the defense. Uh, so it's not about only the goals, uh, it's about the, the, uh, the seven meters and it's about the assists. Uh, and uh, if you take a closer look to this, you will see that, for instance, uh, Mahé in uh, France is a very important player, uh, uh, at least in one game against Germany, that uh, in the semi-final, I think it was Spain against Denmark, it was uh, Mats Menza Larsen, uh, who was scoring uh, almost in, in incredible situations. Uh, so from my point of view, he was the man of the match. Uh, and uh, the one who was constantly in focus uh, in, in every uh, tough game uh, was Dushabayev. Uh, so that's why, from my point of view, Dushabayev should be the most valuable player of the whole tournament because he was uh, doing a, a very good job in all games, but especially in that last five minutes, in that crunch time, he was really, really strong player uh, and decisive player. Uh, he made the decisions, scoring, or making the assist. Uh, another quite interesting um, topic is that uh, in this last five minutes, we had almost no goals from the wing positions when they were playing six against six uh, against normal defense, not against open defense or half court man to man, but if they play against six zero five one whatever, uh, you could always see no scoring from the wing. Uh, and this is some, why do you shake your head? Very strange. Uh, uh, but it, it, it was obvious uh, because the defense, from my point of view, uh, but this is my personal opinion, was not uh, uh, focused on helping enough. So normally we can say that if there's a strong player, let's say like Mikkel Hansen, uh, the defense has to move to that side, decrease the space, help against that player. Okay, if this one is creating an advantage and passing the ball to the next, uh, next player in defense must help. So then it's maybe third defender against second attacker. Uh, so if Mikkel Hansen is first attacker and drawing two defenders, then defender number three is coming against second attacker. And this can be continued till right wing is scoring uh, because there is no more defender against him. Uh, so in that moment, uh, from my personal uh, philosophy of handball might say, uh, the most important action is Mikkel Hansen drawing second defender and then passing the ball. Then they continue this passing till finally right wing is free. So the assist in my idea is not from right back to right wing. Uh, the assist is drawing the second defender on the left back position. Uh, uh, and this is uh, something which is uh, uh, quite um, uh, strange uh, that this way of playing uh, from one to the next position because of help from the defense, it, it wasn't to be seen in that matches. Uh, we can see that one player is making a good one-on-one -on -one move, maybe scoring, maybe second defender is coming. But in that moment, pass is coming to second attacker and then no more help is given. Uh, so second attacker is breaking through, shooting or scoring easily. Uh, so in that moment, from my point of view, defense was not strong enough, was not keen enough, uh, was not focused on helping. Uh, and 
the only difference uh, in, in defense I could see from the Spanish team. Uh, they really, from my point of view, defend in a different way uh, compared to the others. Thank you, Klaus. For me, that was a really provocative topic to push us to think a little bit about the importance of last five minutes in every game. And then during the presentation, I, I put a small conclusion, one sentence for each of those points. And in the first, for first part, I have to say, if those teams, France, Denmark, or Spain, lead after five, 55 minutes, it's already too late. Be before, as you said, coaches has to change something to play 4-2, 3-3 offensive. Now it's already too late. You have to decide before to change something because you will not change the game in the last five minutes with those teams. Yeah. First three teams from Olympia. Second point is about defense. And for me, uh, as you say, uh, I understand that they don't change if they are already successful, but opponent has to change to, to make any changing because match is already close to the end and you have to change something even to with something what you didn't try. That's why we need at least one more defense in our packet to change in last 10, 15 minutes, or second half, as you said, because for me, your sentence that nothing changed even from first to second half, if France, Denmark, or Spain lead after first half, that means time that you do something on the half time and or you will go to the end like a dead man. You don't have nothing to defeat with, to lose the game with one or five goals. Don't make any sense. But you have 30 minutes to prepare your statement for the press conference while you were losing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Point three uh, about attack uh, was very interesting, Serhan and Klaus that you find that they play seven versus six just in the moments when they were behind and they want to change something. That means that they didn't play this seven versus six as a attack, some part of their attack, just in the moment where they are under pressure or they are behind. Except, About, then, uh, except then, Mike, they played it all the time. Denmark, yes, agree with you. Uh, about MVP player, for me, it's a really, I was expecting that you will find that because they are most valuable player, because they are most effective and they decide the game in this period on last five minutes. All balls has to go to Hansen, but I agree with you that when he occupy defense on him, has to pass the ball to amazing wings like they haven't realized well. But for me, that was not um, some something what I didn't expect. And uh, last, about coaches, about us, uh, maybe it looks uh, very strange for us that, they, for example, France didn't take any time out in the last five minutes. But let's go back to the point one. If they lead in minute 55, they don't have a reason because they will win the game. Maybe, Let, let's try to see on, on that way that they already, they know importance on previous 55 minutes and then they spend their timeouts for this. Uh, maybe just to this, maybe you remember the story uh, from the game uh, Norway against France, uh, which was the last game in the group. Uh, Norway was leading two goals in front. Uh, and I think 20 seconds before the end, they took team time out. Uh, uh, and Karabacic, he was very angry. Uh, and after the team time out, he came to Bergelund, uh, assistant coach of Norwegian team, and they had some, some German talks uh, uh, because they had both been playing together in Kiel. Uh, I remember that from the game. Not not very nice words in that moment. Uh, so uh, because uh, in in that moment uh, with two goals in front, uh, you you shouldn't take team time out in that time. Uh, 
I want to say thank you for, for you, Klaus, for your addition. I want to say thank you for Mehmet, and I will call uh, now, I will give the floor to Mehmet Serhan to give his words. Uh, I would like to say, uh, last of all, thank you very much for understanding. Uh, I hope uh, we will be better before this or future. <laughs> and also, uh, once again, Thank you very much, Mr. Feldman. Uh, I hope uh, I will send all my presentation. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, listening, for all my friends. Uh, as I promised, we will send, uh, Mehmet and me, we will send presentation and video materials. But if you have some questions to Mehmet Serhan or to Klaus, please don't hesitate and ask Goran, Mihailo, Akim, people who are here, Dragan, if you want to add something from your side or if you want to ask, please. Like usual. <laughs> I just to add also, it is very provocative uh, topic and for sure, uh, I will pay attention on this more than, than usual. It is very provocative. I expect uh, that you will send all, all videos and, and uh, presentation also. And thank you. Agree. And this statistic is also important. I would like also to see again statistic from, from all these matches because we can see what how they attack and what's happened in this last five minutes. Thank you, Akim for your comment. Uh, thank you for your presence tonight. Thank you once again to Klaus and Mehmet. And I will invite you to book your time for 15 of November in, in three weeks. Uh, Marius Novang from Romania will uh, have a topic about individual work with young players in handball from his perspective. Uh, on the pivot position and in, in general, because he is working with young players, he apologized as a training in this moment. And he will try to present this and to uh, make us uh, interesting with, with my help on 15 of November. Thank you once again. Good luck with your teams and things what you're doing. And see you on 15 of November. Thank you very much. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.